as I was saying, God impressed in my heart to for us to pray over these three different areas. The first one is the unity of the church. The unity of the church. You know, it's amazing the way when Christ was about to leave this planet Earth, the first thing that he prayed for was the unity of the church. He didn't pray for the church to increase financially or increase in number. He prayed for the unity of the church. And I believe that that's the prayer today for the church to rise up in unity. You know, there is strength in unity. When the church speaks with one voice, when the church gets the same revelation, when the church submits, when the whole body of Christ submits to uh, what God is doing, it's very important. So the first thing that we're going to pray for tonight is the unity of the church, the body of Christ all over the world, not only in Kenya. And then the second thing that God impressed in my heart to pray for was for our leaders and our institutions, our president, his cabinet, our church leaders, our pastors, all those people who are in authority. Because I've always come to understand that when you begin to pray for other people, you know, you are giving in your time and your energy. And whenever there is labor, there is also profit. You become the first beneficiary when you pray for other people. Amen. God has tasked us to pray for our leaders because they are the ones you know, with a torch, they give us the direction as a nation. And when they take a different direction, we all go and suffer the consequences. So when we pray for our nation, we all stand to benefit. When we pray for our pastors, we all stand to benefit. The benefits begin, begin from us. And then the last thing we need to pray for is our nation, the people of this country. We need to pray that God may turn their heart, that even as God is speaking through, through this, these times, that they will, that veil that is over their face may be lifted up. Amen. So let us just go before the Lord. And if you can get your space, thank you very much for those who are still tuning in. May God bless you. Get your space and just pray for this, uh, these three different points: the unity of the body of the church, of, of the church, and then also for our leaders and also for our nation. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Father, for giving us this wonderful opportunity, Almighty Father, to even seek your face, Almighty God. Thank you, Father, for the breath of life. Lord, you say in your word that let everything that has breath praise the Lord our oh God. Even those who are sick right now, those who are out there, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Almighty God, that you may be with us, oh God. Be with us as we begin this session, oh God. We acknowledge your presence in this place, Almighty Father. Yahweh, we pray, oh God, that you may come and glorify your name, oh Lord Jesus. Come and manifest in this place, Almighty God. Connect us, oh God, in fellowship, Almighty God. Connect us by your spirit, Almighty Father. Oh God, we thank Thank you, Father, for what you're about to do. Oh, God, Father, for what you're doing already, oh, God, behind the scenes. We know, mighty Father, that you never, never sleep or slumber, Lord Jesus. Lord, oh, God, you are much aware. Nothing gets you by surprise, oh, God. We thank you because you are still on the throne, oh, God. Oh, mighty Father, there is no name above your name. You are Alpha and Omega. Lord Jesus, tonight we glorify your name. We lift you up. We praise you, oh, God. We praise you with everything in us, oh God. Thank you, Father, for your hand that is never too short to deliver from any situation of God. Lord, we come together, Lord Jesus, the body of Christ here on earth, and we pray Father for the welfare, for the, for the good of, of the church of Mary, Father, Lord. We acknowledge you, Christ, as the head of our church, oh God. We pray, Father, for the unity of the church all over the world, oh Mary, God. We pray, oh Mary, Father, we know, God, that judgment will begin Father from your house, so we humble ourselves, oh God, and we ask you, Lord, Jesus, my Father, that you may purify our altars, O God. Let there be a restoration, O God. Build the walls that were broken. Mighty Father, the walls of protection, O Mighty Father. The walls, O God, that divide us, O God, Father, from the world. Lord, we have, O Mighty God, interacted with the world so much that nobody can tell the difference, O God. We repent, O God. We repent on behalf of the body of Christ here on earth, O Lord Jesus. And we ask, O God, that you may forgive us. Anoint us afresh, O oh God. Anoint your servants afresh, Father, for this season. We pray, Father, for their welfare, O oh God. Let there be 
agreement, oh my God, agreement, oh Lord Jesus, in the body of Christ, unity, submission, oh my God, we can only walk together when we are one, oh Lord Jesus, we can only function well, oh my God, when we are united, we pray, Father, for unity, unity, oh God, unity of vision, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, this is not to say that you are about, you are supposed to abandon our different denominations, oh God, we just pray that the same spirit, oh my God, my Father, Lord, that you are, oh God, let it dwell in us, oh Lord Jesus. Even right now, mighty God, we continue to pray, oh my Father, oh God, that the church may arise, oh mighty God. Oh God, it is the city upon the hill, oh mighty God. Nobody lights, oh God, a candle that puts it under the table. We pray, Father, for the church to take its center stage, oh mighty God, in the world in events right now. We ask, oh God, we long, Father, for the voice of the church, oh God, to speak a direction, oh mighty God, to speak, oh God, and to give the people of this world hope. My Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, use your church, oh God, as, a, as an instrument, oh mighty Father, to glorify your name today in the mighty name of Jesus. We pull down, oh mighty God, any altar that is not of you, oh mighty God. And Lord, let your altar be established in all our cities, oh my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Purify your body, oh God, restore so your body, Lord Jesus. Lord, even right now, God, we pray, Father, for our leaders. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for our president. We thank you for his life. We thank you, Father, for his mandate to oh God. We are not leaving it to him, oh God. We are not going to speak words of discouragement, words of disapproval, oh Lord Jesus. My God, forgive us when we have cast him, oh Lord Jesus. We pray, oh Father, that he may be blessed, oh God. Blessed, oh mighty Father, oh God, with, with a sound mind. Mind, oh God, we pray, Father, for the spirit of wisdom to rest upon him, the spirit of the Lord to rest upon him, the spirit of understanding, of knowledge, of godly counsel to rest upon him. Give him peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Remove all insecurities, all doubts, oh God. My Father, Lord, we pray, oh God, that you, you may bring out, oh Lord Jesus, that which that you destined in his life, oh my God, my Father, Lord, to lead this nation in the right direction. We pray, Father, for all the leaders of the world, including United States, oh Lord Jesus. We pray, oh my God, that you may establish your throne. We know that all authority and power comes, Father, from you, oh my Father. I thank you and I bless you, O oh God, Father, for all our governors, O oh God, all our MCAs, O oh God, all our members of parliament, O oh mighty God, those who occupy, O oh mighty Father, Lord, the judiciary in the mighty name of Jesus, those who make laws, may they make laws, O oh God, that, O oh mighty Father, glorify your name in the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, our institutions, our schools, O oh God, our hospitals, O oh God, stretch your hand, O oh mighty Father, stretch your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, even over the media in the mighty name of Jesus that your agenda may be proclaimed, oh God, and not the enemy's agenda over this nation, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak, oh mighty God, life in the mighty name of Jesus. In our homes, oh mighty God, we speak life in our streets in the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse any cloud of darkness that is about, oh mighty Father, to glorify his name, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Almighty oh Father, thanking you, Father, for all in authority. We ask, O oh God, that you may direct the hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray, Almighty oh Father, lastly, Father, for our nation, the people of this country. We ask, O oh God, that you may lift up the veil, O oh mighty God, of darkness, of ignorance, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father, for the fear of the Lord, that you draw them to you, O oh God. If you be lifted, O oh mighty Father, may you draw men to you, O oh Lord Jesus. We pray, Father, O oh God, for this land, O oh mighty Father. We ask, O oh God, Father, for a spirit of healing, mighty God, a wave of healing to flow through this nation in all corners of this country, O oh God, in the the mighty name of Jesus, restore hope in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who have given up, O oh mighty Father, those who have said that to, to hell with this thing called church, O oh mighty God, Lord, restore them. May you magnify your name, O oh mighty God. I know people are asking, where are the signs and wonders, O oh God, in churches, O oh mighty Father? Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you may restore their hope in you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, Lord Jesus, 
Oh God, by your grace as I minister, Lord Jesus, I humble myself before you, O oh God, that you may use me as an instrument, O oh God. Mighty Father, Lord, that you may put in your word in my heart in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father, for all the viewers, O oh God, right now, O oh mighty Father, and those who may watch this later, O oh God, bless them, O oh God. Open the eyes of understanding, O oh God. Let them be in tune, O oh God. Mighty Father, Lord, I thank you. I ask you, O oh God, that you may restore whatever has been lost, O oh God. May you, may you encourage someone tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. May you shine and shed your light upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. We also thank you, Lord Father, for our senior pastors, Reverend Ron and Sharon, Almighty oh God. May you bless their heart, bless their soul, Almighty oh Father. O oh God, Grant them the desires of their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to pour oil of anointing, Almighty God, in this season, O God, that even as they continue to bless us, O God, and to minister to us, that you may also water them and minister to them and their families, O God. And all glory and honor will come back to you. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Somebody type amen. Amen. If you can wave, you just wave. <laughs> Thank you very much. Today I was led to share. Today I was led I was led to share from John from the book of John chapter 15. From the book of John chapter 15 if you have your bibles please turn to John chapter 15 and because of time I'm going to read. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. So I'm going to read from John chapter 15 from verse 1. Thank you very much for all those who are online. I hope that your day is still blessed. You are a blessing to us. Uh, it says that I am the true vine. I'm the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear fruit more fruit excuse you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing. If you, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, as you will by my disciples. Amen. That was the word of God. Abide in me, my father. I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Amen. We can only bear fruit when you continue to abide in Christ. Well, God gave me this message because one thing that the enemy does is that when he cannot confront us outright, he prolongs the season of attack. Amen. You know, at the beginning of the year when this COVID-19 thing started, we all thought that it was only going to last for two weeks. Amen. So many of us say that, hey, after all, it's just a mini vacation. Let us go home and, and sleep for two weeks. And then after two weeks, we'll be back, energized and ready to continue building our nation. But to our surprise, this thing has continued until now. And even as right now, people are planning for 2020, people have shoved their vision, they have shelved their plans, the plans that God gave them during the beginning of the year. People have lost hope and they're saying that let us try again 20, 2021. Maybe 2021 will be a different year. But what if, what if this pandemic extends beyond 2021? Will we stop living? Will we stop doing what is necessary, what is required of us? Amen. So in light of that, God is encouraging us to abide in Him. Abide, to continue being connected to Him. Amen? You know, the enemy's plan is to get us to be tired, to get us to, to be weary. Amen? He, he, his plan is to get us to a place where we say that, hey, 
uh, I've tried, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've given, I've done all these things, all the things that is necessary of me, but I am not seeing any light at the end of the tunnel. That is a tactic of the enemy, and we have to be aware of his plans. We have to be aware of his, of his devices. We need to continue to abide in Christ during this season. You know, when a branch is connected to, it, to the stem, it draws its food from the stem. So we also need to continue to draw our strength from 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 the, the the vine that is christ we need to continue to abide in his word we need to continue to encourage ourselves in the lord you know i uh, remember the battle at ziklag david is a man that that was getting accustomed to winning every war that was brought before him but at one point at ziklag the enemy you know outwitted him when he went away the enemy attacked the village and he took away all all their belongings and destroyed and everything was in fire and when they came back with together with his army and or battalion they found out that the enemy had destroyed everything that they left behind and their wives and children were, were taken to a foreign place and he got so discouraged and even his his partners, his co-workers, they got so discouraged that they even began to turn their backs against him. David was so discouraged at this, knowing that he's a servant of the Lord. But you are told that he fell down, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. Do you know that even a small encouragement from the Lord can renew and regen, re-energize us to win the next battle? And tonight our encouragement is be encouraged, abide in Christ so that you may draw a new, a fresh strength from him. He's the one who sustains us. He's the one who built and created everything. And out of him, we get sustenance. He's the one who is able to encourage us for this season. Even though the enemy may keep on burning us with negative news, we know that we are not of this world, even though we are in this world. We are from a different kingdom. You know, Christ, when he stood before uh, Pilate, he said, I'm from a different kingdom. So we need to continue to draw our strength. This is not the time to put down your work, your, 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 your tools. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to, to say that I've tried all and it's not working. It is the time to keep on abiding in Christ. The Bible tells us to abide in Christ, abide in his word, and also abide in his love. And then, when we do these three things, there is a conditional promise that is given to us in verse 7. If you look at verse 7, it says that if you abide in me and my words in you, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. It shall be done for you what you desire, anything that you desire. It shall be done to you. Why? Because you are abiding in Christ, you are abiding in his word, and also you are abiding in his love. God loves you with an unconditional love. It doesn't matter your history. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what you've gone through this season. It doesn't matter your mistakes. It doesn't matter your shortfalls, your flaws. None of those matters when it comes to this scripture. It only requires us to abide so in him so that we may be able to experience his love. God loves us. If he loved the whole world, in that while you are still sinners, he sent his only begotten son to die for us. He loves us that much to the point where he's willing to lose his life for our sake. So what will hinder us from experiencing his love in this season? There's nothing that can separate us from his love. There is nothing known to men that can separate us from the love of God. So he's asking us to continue to abide in him so that we may be re-energized, re restored, replenished. Amen? Redeemed by his word. Continue to abide in Christ. And anything that we ask, under this condition, anything that we ask, it shall be given to us. How many know how sweet uh, the blessings of unanswered prayers are? When you pray for something, God answers it. And sometimes when you desire something, God already knows your, your, your needs and he answers them even before you open your mouth. Because that is scripture. He tells us that he knows our needs even before we ask of them. And he grants us the desires of our hearts when we delight in him. 
the blessings of an answered prayer comes when we continually abide in Christ, abide in his word, and also abide in his love. So many times the enemy can tell us that we are not loved, or we are rejected, or we are not good enough, and all those things. You have to meditate on the word of God. The word of God tells us that he has loved us with an unconditional love. Abiding in the word of God. Let me tackle this one first. Before you would enter your promised land, or rather, before the children of Israel entered the promised land, they are given one thing to do, to meditate on the word of God, to not let the word of God, uh, to keep the word of God before their face. That means that they were to abide in the word of God, in the promises of God. That's the only way to enter our promised land. Maybe God has promised you something in this season. Maybe God promised you something in the year 2020, at the beginning of this year. Abide in Christ. Meditate on his word. If you meditate on his word, we are like a tree that is planted along the riverside. You know, that tree is staying there. It is not moving away from the river of life. It is being sustained by that river. As long as you are being sustained by his word, you will always break through or enter your promise or enter what God has promised you. What has God promised you during this season? Has he promised you divine health? Has he promised you uh, has he promised you a piece of land? Has he promised you uh, education, move, going to a higher education, doing something, or even getting marriage, or even building a house? What has God promised you? He withholds nothing from his children. God is not somewhere trying to block you and trying to tell you to prove yourself first. No, he's not doing anything like that. He's only telling you and asking us and all of us, including myself, to continue to abide in him to continue to abide in him, in his word. Christ told his disciples that these words that I speak to you are spirit. And we know that the spirit of God is the life-giving spirit. So when we abide in Christ, we are full of life. When we abide in Christ, there is a future and a hope for us. You are different. As much as people are going through hard time, you are different. They can see that there is a different environment or countenance or aura around your face. They know that there is something that is happening with you. When you abide in Christ, he restores everything that the enemy has eaten away. The years that the enemy has it the locust has eaten shall he restore unto us that time that you have wasted he is able to restore it that thing that you lost because of your ignorance there is restoration today there is restoration tonight christ is able to restore all that when the thief has been caught you know what he returns back twice or sevenfold so the only thing that we need to do is to abide in christ abide in his word Meditate on his word. Think about uh, what his word is saying. Imagine it. Our imagination is very important. You know, every time God is about to bless someone, he gives them a promise so that they can think about that promise. They can imagine. When, when, when Abraham was being given a promise, he was told, go outside, look at the stars. And as you look at the stars, count them. So will shall be so, so hey my 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 language is getting my tongue is, has been redeemed from this and shh, amen. <laughs> so every time he looked at the skies, he, he saw the numerous stars, and he promised he he comforted himself that God has promised me that I will have as many children as these stars. Our imagination is very important. Think about good things. Think about noble things. Think about things that are worthy of praise. Think about things that are glorify your, the name of God. Think about all these things. Think about the promises that you see yourself. You have to think about them until you see yourself in the promises of God. That is abiding in his word. Whatever you are told by the doctor, whatever you've been told by your friends, whatever you've been told by, by those who purport to have seen a lot in this world and, and, and say that they are so mature that, you know, this direction that you've taken, it only ends up 
We appreciate the wisdom, but that is the wisdom of this world. Think about what God is saying in this season. Amen? And stick to it. Stick to the promises of God. Stick to the encouragement of God. Abide in Christ, and then you shall be replenished. You shall be restored. You shall be re-energized. Those of us who are feeling weary today, God is about to do something new in your life. If you abide in Christ, meditate on his word. There is a covering that God has put over his children. You know, when we go outside there, we do not go like ordinary men. For ordinary men, when they lose their businesses, it's the end of their life. When they lose their job, it's the end of their life. When they, when they lose their health, it's the end of their life. When they lose someone, it's the end of them because they're only seeing the end. But in Christ, the kingdom of Christ keeps on increasing and increasing and increasing. There is no loss. God has never lost a battle. It is us who have been misrepresenting Christ. Amen. He has never lost any battle. When we abide in Christ, we know that we are victory is ours for the taking. Increase is ours for the taking. Joy and gladness of heart is ours for the taking. You know, sometimes God wants you to master what is going around you. Maybe you have found yourself in a storm. God wants you to have peace, first of all, in your heart so that he can also change your environment. You might be in a storm right now. God is waiting for you to be still and know that he is Lord. He wants, sometimes he is not going to remove our situation. He's not going to change our situation until we have been transformed in the inside until we have been changed in the inside until we've reached that place where even if i'm thrown into the fire there is nothing to lose i will still not bow to the idols before me god wants you to reach that place and when you have mastered the sin you know the sin is knocking at the doors of your heart but you are you, 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 you need to master it or else it will master you. When sin masters us, then we get afraid. We become afraid. We become terrified. We lose our cool. We lose our, our rest. And God does not want us to be affected by what is going around us. He wants us to be that light, that light that is put on top of the table, a city upon a hill. That is our destiny brothers and sisters. He wants us to be the ones that give hope to the world around us. He wants us to be the ones that shine uh, the light of Christ to the world around us, the salt of the earth. We are the ones that bring something new, give taste to everything that is bitter. God wants us to be like the yeast. Its influence is increasing and increasing and increasing, but he can only do that when we abide in Christ, when we abide in Christ. Something that is very interesting when uh, I was doing my studies, I came to notice that uh, before the children of Israel were about to enter the, the, the promised land, they only had one last territory to pass through, and it was the territory of the Moabites. The territory of the Moabites. And the Moabites knew and they had heard of how the children of Israel had terrorized the nations around them how they had you know god had delivered them from from the grip of pharaoh how god had parted the seas how god had uh, fed them had fed them through manna had how god has sustained them in the wilderness and and given them water through the rocks they had heard of all these testimonies so they knew that this this nation was a different nation. So what they did, the Moabites and I don't know which tribe, they, come, they came and ganged up together and got united against the children of Israel. And they looked for a prophet who was as equally powerful as Moses and his name was Balaam. How many know Balaam? You've read of Balaam. So Balaam, we are told, actually history tells us that everything that he prophesied happened. Even though he was a sorcerer, he was able also to discern what God was doing. And he would tell, he even prophesied the kingship of Balak, that Balak is the one who was going to reign over these two unified nations. So Balak went and looked for a prophet who was equally strong as Moses. So that they could counter, they could fight each other in, in spiritual. I don't know how, how, how it happens. But he was supposed to speak a curse to the children over the children of Israel. So three times he was pursued. But he said that, hey, God has told me that, hey, 
I'm not supposed to do that. But the last time God told him, okay, go. Go, but do only that which I've allowed you to do. So Balak is happy. He, he goes with Balaam and they go. And when, when, when Balaam opened his mouth, instead of cursings flowing out, only blessings came out of his mouth. Do you know that God is able to turn that which the enemy has meant for your, for, for your downfall? He's able to turn it all around for your own good. Ask Joseph. He told his brothers that you meant it for wrong, but God has turned it for our welfare, for our good. God is able to turn that. And that one gives us an eyesight on, on how if we abide in God, how he's able to protect us. That even those who mean bad for us cannot do anything. Cannot. There is no weapon fashioned against us that can ever prosper. Everything that the enemy tries to do behind the scene, he cannot get to the children of God because they are protected. You remember Job, the devil had to appear before God and tell God that, you know, you are the one who has protected him, blessed him, put a hedge around him. Just do one thing, remove the hedge. That's how God is protecting us in the spirit. So many angels surround us. As long as you are a child of God, as long as you are a child of God, you have that protection behind you. You have God's provision behind you. You have God's word and promises and covenant behind you. So whatever mountain you're facing, just know that the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So Balaam told Balak that these people cannot be cast. They cannot be harmed. In fact, the more he tried to cast them, the more he blessed them, the more he, he prophesied good over this nation. But because he was given money, at the end, he told the king, Balak, that you know what? The only way to get to these people is to cause them to sabotage themselves. Send in prostitutes. Let them, let the men go and sleep with, you know, and do, and, 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 and commit a sin before God. Then and only then can you be able to attack these people. That has been the strategy of the enemy. Sometimes you... You ask God, God, I'm a faithful servant. I go to church, I pray, I evangelize, I give offerings and tithes. I obey your word. When you speak to me, I listen to you, I obey it. But how comes this attack entered my house? The enemy always causes us to sabotage ourselves because he has known that we have been protected and, and the serpent cannot cross over the hedge. Amen. And how do we sabotage ourselves? Sometimes we sabotage ourselves by speaking words that are contrary to what God is speaking over us. God wants you to go somewhere and you are saying that, oh, 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 because of the rain, because of the environment, I cannot go. You are sabotaging yourself. You are not confessing what God is confessing over you. When Job was going through a hard time, on this other hand, God was saying that, have you seen my servant who is righteous? And you, on this other side, you're saying that, what sin have I committed? I'm a sinner. I do not deserve all this. I came into this world naked and all that. You're speaking contrary to what God is speaking over your life. So brothers and sisters, you know, the other day somebody called me and said, how are you, how are you Pastor Bethel? And I, and, and I told her that, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm doing well in the Lord. And he laughed at me because he knows that when I say I'm, I'm doing good in the Lord, then there is something else, but I'm not, conf I'm not aligning myself to it. So he said, he laughed and he said, I know what you mean. You know, we've been, go we've been through too much until you cannot confess what is <laughs> happening in your life. But the thing is, I was trying to align myself, not to confess evil when God has spoken light over my situation. Amen. We need to align our tongue to what God is speaking. We are a speaking being. God has created us in his image and likeness. And God, when he saw darkness, he never described the darkness. He never went to, 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 to he, he never went back to himself and said, hey, it is dark outside there. What can we do? Can we strategize? And all this. No. Immediately he saw darkness, he spoke, let there be light. And in this season, it is upon us, the body of Christ, the church, to speak life where there is death, to speak healing where there is sickness, to speak increase where there is loss of business and, and all that. Because God is still 
on the throne. And that is the good news. God is still on the throne. He is still in charge. And there is no shadow of turning in him. Whatever he says, he's not a man to lie to us. He's not a man to deceive us. He's not a man to, 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 to come short of his promises. Whatever God has promised us in this season, it shall be established. But it is depending upon us abiding in his word and abiding in Christ and abiding in his love. Then and only then, whatever we ask, it shall be done unto us. Whatever we desire, it shall be done unto us. Do not sabotage yourself by reacting differently, by speaking of what you're seeing. Don't say what you see. Say what God is saying over your situation. Because by doing that, you are demonstrating your faith that even though, even though I'm in this storm, God shall save me. Even though I'm in this situation, God is still on the throne. Even though I'm going through this, I'm not confessing and aligning and giving the enemy an opportunity to manifest himself. We need to praise God in every situation. I got a revelation about praise. You know, God inhabits the praises of his children. When we begin to praise God, we magnify his name. Amen. We remove our eyes from our situation and we set our eyes on God. Those who have got their eyes set on Christ shall have perfect peace. So when we magnify God and rejoice in whatever situation, I'm not saying that you need to to pretend that all is well. No, you are just being real with God and expressing your faith in him. That you praise him even when you are going through hard times. Amen. When we praise God, we magnify his name. We magnify his name. But there's another thing that praise does. Praise diminishes the power and authority that the enemy is trying to afflict on us. Praise diminishes the power that the enemy has over us. So that when, you are, when he expects you to be crying, you are laughing. When he expects you to be mourning, you are rejoicing. When he expects you to be separating yourself and looking down upon yourself, you are out there ministering to others. Paul, he, he, he experienced, he experienced uh, how, when he was on his way... Um, how, how do you call it? A, a shipwreck, yes, that's the word. He experienced a shipwreck. But there was something different about Paul. He had a different revelation. When, when the islanders were going out trying to help those who had experienced the, the, the shipwreck, they were so cold, they were, they were hopeless, they were all that separated, they needed help. But Paul was different. Him, he went to help the people of the island. He went to help the highlanders to help these people who had been shepherd, knowing that he too needed to be cared of or to be taken care of. When he was beaten by a viper, he simply shook it off and continued to do that which God had mandated him to do. And people looked at it and they said that this person might be a demigod. But Paul said that, no, 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 I'm only a servant. He was drawing his strength from God. Even though he had suffered a shipwreck, even though he had been beaten by a viper, he did not pity himself. He did not look and magnify what the enemy was trying to do, that discouragement, that disappointment. He only did that which Christ was leading him to do at that moment. And instead of having pity on himself, he was out there encouraging other peoples other people and in the process people the, the the islanders were able to acknowledge that hey this man is a man of god and they gave him a chance to minister to to them and god has promised us that we'll take on serpents we'll we'll tread over scorpions that will drink poison and nothing will harm us nothing will harm us if you believe in that word say amen type amen amen God has promised us all these things. We need to abide in him and his word in us. And we also need to abide in his love. That when, when God tells me to do something, I know that it is not for my downfall. I know that it is for the increase of his kingdom. I came to realize that, you know, when the enemy tries to make us sabotage ourselves, you know, he he's always trying to... To, to take away that which God has promised us. Amen. He's always trying to snatch that which God has promised us. 
from 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 our lives and uh, and if if sin if sin was if sin was uh, in the mathematics sin is symbolized by a minus I mean that's what I was looking for sin is like a minus it takes away it diminishes what God has put in us the moment Adam and Eve sinned the moment they sinned the enemy started taking away the life that they had been given and somebody may ask why did they not die immediately it is because sin diminishes it goes from this size to this size to this side until they lost their lives that's how sin works in our lives and the bible tells us that if somebody sins he lacks understanding if you understand this you'll never sin or as God gives you the grace, you'll never think of somebody negatively. You'll never think of evil things. You know, sometimes we might be good people. We go to church, people know us. We dress well. We do all those things. We speak well. But inside our hearts, we think negative things. We think evil things. You know, the heart of man is wicked above all. But if God was to just expose all that, then we'll know the true nature of people, the people, the way they are. But God is encouraging us to let the word of God abide in us. Amen. Abide in us so that sin may not be found in us. David says that I've hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. When you have the word of God, not in your mind, when you meditate on it and it enters your heart, then it will begin to do something new in your heart. It will begin to, to turn your heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh is responsive. It is able to, to respond to what God is doing. Amen? So when we meditate on the word of God, we are abiding in Christ. When we meditate on the love of God, we are still abiding in Christ. Brothers and sisters, this season is going to pass. Everything that has a beginning has an end. It's only God who doesn't have a beginning or an end. So there is nothing new under the sun. Everything that has a beginning has an end. And this too shall pass. Let us get to that place where the children of Israel are told that these Egyptians, you shall see them no more. And stick to that. They reach a place where the Egyptians were behind them and the oceans, the sea was before them. And they didn't know what to do. But that promise still held. These Egyptians that you see today, you'll see them no more. God opened a way where there was no way. And that is his character. He's the God who opens a way where there is no way. As long as you've turned your back to the, to the world and you're facing and going in the direction that God has instructed you to, to do, he will open a way where there is no way. There is nothing impossible with God. There is nothing impossible with God. He's a miracle worker. There, there is nothing. His hands are never too short to deliver from any situation. What is your story tonight? What is your story tonight? God wants to give you a testimony. God wants to make your joy to be full tonight. God wants to do a new thing. When the doctors have pronounced you to be sick, God wants to do something new tonight in your body. He wants to rub away the seasons of pain and darkness and anguish from your life. He wants to do a new thing in your life. But you have to abide, to continue. The strategy of the enemy is to get us tired. He, he attacks day in the, in the day time, in the night time. So when you are about to rest, he's there attacking us. When you are at work, he's there attacking us. When you are out in the street, he's there attacking us. But when you continue to abide in Christ... You draw out strength to overcome the enemy. One last thing before we say the closing prayers. The children of Israel, when they were about to enter the promised land, God instructed them on the way, on how to cross the river Jordan. This time he was not going to part the waters. This time he told the priest to go ahead with the Ark of the Covenant and enter the water. And he also told the children of Israel to do the same, to follow after the priests. The waters were not parted, they were so deep, and they knew that they, maybe they could have drowned, we don't know what could have happened, but they were instructed 
to go into the water. Tonight, God is telling us that thing that he promised you. You know, there is always a spoil after every battle. There is a spoil after every battle. The enemy is trying to, you know, do, but there is always a spoil after every battle. He told them to enter the water. He put the Ark of the Covenant before them. Brothers and sisters, the Ark of the Covenant represents Christ. It represents Christ. They were to look at the Ark of the Covenant as they entered the water, forgetting about what the water could do to them. It, they, some of them could have sunk, some of them could have drowned, but they had to forget about all that. All they needed to do was to look at the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat and the seat of grace. Amen? That is delighting in Christ. God shall grant us everything that our hearts desire if we delight in Christ. Be conscious of the Ark of the Covenant. Today, he is the high priest. Be conscious of his presence in your life. Paul told us to pray without ceasing. Prayer is fellowship. Have fellowship without ceasing. Have fellowship with Christ, with his word, with his love, without ceasing. It is not a time to say that I only pray in the morning and also in the evening. No. Have fellowship with God as you walk out, as you drive, going to, to, to work or coming back from your job. Have fellowship with Christ. Have, let it, have that conscious that God is there with you, protecting you. Have your mind set on Him. Things may be happening around you, but focus on Him. Focus on the altar. Focus on the, on, 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 on the mercy seat. Amen? Amen? Focus on the mercy seat. Focus on Christ. That is delighting in God. That is abiding in Christ. So that everything that you do, you do it as if you are doing it to Christ because you are already focusing on Him. Everything that you involve yourself in, you are very conscious that Christ is here and He expects me to glorify His name. Have that conscious that God is there and His angels are there. When you are out there in the street, don't be afraid. Have that conscious that there is one who is backing you up, who is surrounding you with a hedge of fire and no serpentine spirit can cross or leap over the wall. Amen? Be conscious just the way the children of Israel were told to let the Ark of the Covenant go before him. And as they entered the waters, the waters parted. As we go out there, we may not see the end. But we have one who has seen, who have seen the end. And he has the last say. Amen? He has the last say over our situation. So be encouraged tonight. Continue to abide in Christ. Continue to abide in his word. And let the word of God abide in you. Continue to abide in his love. Just think of how God loves you. For you even to, to tune to tonight's service. How God has strategically ordered your steps. For, for, for even you to have a job in this season. For even you to not go hungry. Think of how he loves you. Many people do not have food on their table. Start thanking God because that will nurture, that will nurture the attitude of thanksgiving. And if you want to access the presence of God, thanksgiving has to be part of what you are doing. When we thank God, he gives us access. It's like telling God that, hey... I'm so glad you did this to me. I want you to do it again. When you thank somebody, that person is always determined to do the same thing next time to you. So we have to meditate on God's love. How he has separated us as far as the east is from the west has he separated us from our iniquities, our sin. He is not accounting them against us and to us. Instead, he is looking up unto us and is saying that, hey, you are my righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. Let us continue to have that in our hearts. Meditate on the word of God. And then your way, your path shall be prosperous. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you for this word. We bless you for all those who, who are online, Lord Jesus. 
you are the all wise king and you are able to see what you are going through some situations are so difficult lord that we cannot speak them out before people my father but we know god that you are aware of our situation you are aware of what you are going through you are aware my father lord of what we've lost you are aware oh my god of this season oh my father and lord oh god your hand is never too short to deliver from any situation oh god tonight we thank you oh my father because victory belongs to you victory belongs to you yahweh oh god come and take your rightful place in our homes in our hearts Almighty God, in everything that we concern ourselves with, Lord, we pray, Almighty God, that you may be glorified, O Lord Jesus. We come, O God, under the pavilion of God, Lord Jesus, that Almighty Father, Lord, whatever the enemy is speaking over us, Almighty God, in the secret, Almighty God, whatever the enemy is trying to devise against your children, you are turning it up, O God, Father, for their good, my God, for our good, O Lord Jesus. The Stumbling stones, Almighty God, are turning, Almighty Father, to be stepping stones, Almighty God, to higher glory because the path of the rushes, Almighty God, is brighter and brighter to the rising, Almighty God, of the sun to midday, O my Father. Tonight, Almighty God, we stand on these promises, O God. We pray, Almighty God, that we may be able to abide in you and your word in us, O God, and your love in us, Almighty Father, that we may bear fruits that glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, I pray, Father, for restoration of my God. Restoration in our marriages. Restoration in our relationships at home with our children, with our parents. I pray for restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has stolen, oh my God, may you return when the thief is caught. He returns back with a profit, oh my Father. Oh God, I pray, Father, that the year that the locust has eaten, oh my God, may it be returned so that the glory of the let a church may be greater in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty God, there is nothing that has a name on this world is above your name, O oh God. You have the name that is above all other names, above this COVID pandemic thing, O oh God, above cancer, O oh God, above any sickness that is known with all with man oh lord jesus there's nothing impossible with you and we thank you almighty father because there is help in the sanctuary tonight there is help almighty god in your presence in the mighty name of jesus almighty god you are able to accelerate us to our destiny in the mighty name of jesus you are able to cause us almighty god to bulldoze through walls of limitation in the mighty name of jesus so build us up oh god in your word build us up almighty god so that we may know how much you love us how much you love us almighty god how much you are on our side in the mighty name of Jesus. How much you're willing to send your angels, Almighty God, if we align ourselves to your perfect will in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you. Mighty God, shine, shed your light, Almighty God, where there is ignorance, ignorance, O God, so that we may not perish because of lack of knowledge, Almighty Father. We thank you tonight. We bless you, Almighty God. Be with our pastors, Almighty God. Be with all our members, O God. Be with all our children. Be with all our young people, Almighty God. Be with all our leaders, Almighty God. Our staff members, Almighty God. Bless them tonight, Almighty God. Mighty Father, Lord, speak a new thing over their lives, Almighty God. And may you rest your hand, O God, over each one of us. Almighty God, may the Spirit of the Lord be be upon each one of us, O my God, the spirit of wisdom and counsel and knowledge and understanding and might, O God, to defeat the enemy and the fear of God, my Father, so that we may accord unto you the reverence that you deserve. We pray all these prayers, trusting and believing in Jesus' name we do pray. And everybody say, Amen. Thank you very much for tuning in tuning in up to this time may god bless you uh, next week pastor sharon will take will take over and we bless we bless her for this opportunity may god just be with all of us amen and this is goodbye thank you very much